Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 5, Chapter 24, a description of the subterranean heavenly planets. And this is verse 16. This is the Srimad Bhagavatam as translated with commentaries by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta, Swami Prabhupada, Founder Acharya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Coming in line of disciplic succession from the Madhva Gaudiya Sampradaya. Or is it Gauda Madhva Sampradaya? It is the Brahma Sampradaya. Great line of disciplic succession, great teachers. Acharyas teach by example. A message of devotional service. The message of love of Godhead. Teach by personal example. Impeccable behavior. Flawless. Perfectly surrendered at the lotus feet of the Lord. So we take shelter there and try to follow as best we can. Always praying for their mercy. Before reading, there's just something that just is really um, sometimes we're in situations where this knowledge that we're receiving from the transcendental persons <clears throat> really just jumps out at us um, in our daily experience. We find ourselves in situations where the truth of what we've been hearing really has a profound um, impact. And uh, this desire to be a center of enjoyment, the, the central enjoyer, <clears throat> The, um, where everyone is focusing attention, when the jiva has that desire, which is actually Krishna's position, he's, he's the supreme enjoyer. He's the center of everything. That's his natural position. <laughs> Anything other than that is unnatural. He's the supreme personality. <clears throat> and everyone and everything is meant for his enjoyment. But when the minute living entity who is part and parcel of Krishna it has the same quality, the same qualities, just not the same quantity, wants to be the center of everything. Oh boy. That's when the illusion It's when the illusion takes over, because it can't be. Now, sometimes a representative of the Lord, a pure representative empowered by the Lord to bring the Lord's message to others, finds themselves in a situation where many different people are surrounding them, but it, it's not for their personal sense gratification. They're a messenger, and they're bringing the message to Krishna. There's no question of 
material sense gratification in that situation. But for the conditioned soul who identifies with their body and their mind, <clears throat> they crave, the conditioned soul craves that kind of attention. They will do anything to get it. Anything. They'll go to hell to get it. And that's the situation we have in the material world. They will do anything. It's an addiction. Material to be the center and to enjoy that attention focused on themselves or the false idea of the self, which is the body. They'll do anything. They will do absolutely anything, horrendous or otherwise, So and they will hurt anyone, it doesn't matter. They'll kill and eat other living entities unnecessarily, the animals. They'll do anything. That's why it's said that this material world is not a, a fit place for a lady or a gentleman. Actually everyone, all the conditioned souls are monsters. They're all monsters, every last one of them. This is, a, this is a monster palace, this material world. It's a place for monsters. Monsters, absolute monsters. <laughs> it's the sickest place it could ever be, is the material world. Even if they're behaving nicely on a gross platform, mentally it's a monster. <laughs> the only shelter is the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead because that's our natural position. Everything else is simply monstrous. So when I have an occasion to see this manifest, this monstrousness, blatant and exposed, but most of the time it's covered over and it looks nice, <laughs> but when it's blatantly exposed, <gasps> gasp, oh my God. So uh, we're doing a lot of gasping lately to see this, this manifest at any cost, have to have it. And it reaches a point where there's not even a conscious effort to try to do it. It's like once you bought the ticket, you're on the train, and that's where you're going. So the desire is there, and you, you don't even make, the person doesn't even make a whole lot of endeavor to get there because the desire is there. It's they bought the ticket, it manifests. So that's why desire needs to be refocused from this idea of I am this body, and I desire to be worshipped as this body and mind. Because this is me, and I have that desire to be worshipped because I'm part and parcel of Krishna. I have that little bit of confusion there. I'm not Krishna, but I am Krishna. I'm like Krishna, but I'm not actually Krishna. <laughs> like the drop of water and the, and the ocean drop of water of the ocean is salty, it has everything the ocean has, but it's not the ocean. It's just a sample, a little drop. So that little bit of confusion is there. When it's manifest, you can actually see it, when I can actually see it, sometimes in myself, but when I see it in someone else, also. I'm grateful for the ability to recognize it and see it for what it is. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to be able to pray for shelter. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to find the shelter. Shelter is in devotional service. 
and devotional service is available through the pure devotees. So that's it in a nutshell. Now, for a description of the subterranean heavenly planets. <laughs> now, this is the material world, so. <laughs> it's, uh, what is it, the example with the stool? Sometimes in the um, less industrialized nations, they're passing stool in the open fields. And so after the sun beats down on it a while, the top part becomes dry. They say, oh, this part is good, it's dry. <laughs> no, dry, wet, what's the difference? Prabhupada spoke like that. Dry, wet, what's the difference? It's stool. So the material world, heavenly planets, hellish planets, earthly, what's the difference? It's all monstrous. <laughs> it's all phantasmagoria. It's all birth and death, old age and disease, just different varieties, different flavors, different intensities. It's all hideous for the pure soul. Once they get a taste. <laughs> of Krishna consciousness. So description of the subterranean heavenly planets. Subterranean, yeah. It, it, below the earth, terranium, terranium, earth. So there are heavenly planets above the earthly atmosphere, and there are also heavenly planets below the earth. There are hellish planets below that, but there are some heavenly planets that are situated below the earthly planet, and it's described that on these subterranean heavenly planets, they're too far away from the sun, so they, they're not illuminated by sunlight. The ones that are above the earthly planet are closer to the sun, and they are illuminated by the sun. But these heaven and their heavenly planets are below the earthly planet, above the hellish planets, but below the earthly planet, and they're illuminated by jewels on the foreheads of serpents. Like uh, at night here, we have light bulbs. <laughs> so. There they have jewels on the heads of these serpents that illuminates everything. And so there's no day or night. And it's described because there's no day and night, the residents there are not troubled by thinking time is passing. We were saying how it's like if you go to a, a shopping mall and it's all artificially lit. Or like if you go to a big store, like, some, like say Walmart, it's open 24 hours a day. It's always the same inside, the same fluorescent light, the same temperature. There's never any rainstorms. And there's always everything that you could ever want. You just have to have money to buy, right? So on the subterranean heavenly planets, it's always the same. And there's no disturbances from the weather. There's no hurricanes. There's no storms. There's, there's no sun. It always has this light from the hoods of these serpents illuminating everything 20 all the time. The only thing they're afraid of that indicates to them that their time is up is when they start to feel the intense heat of the Lord's Sudhasan Chakra. Because when the Sudhasan Chakra makes his appearance, that's when they, their time is up in those bodies. But there's no old age, there's no disease because there's no passing of time, as we understand it. So, now we're gonna hear some more descriptions. These are the lower planets now. That was subterranean, heavenly. Now below that, we're gonna hear about those planets. They're not very nice down there. So this is text 16. My dear king, now I shall describe to you the lower planetary systems one by one, beginning from Atala. In Atala there is a demon, the son of Maya Dhanava named Bala, who created 96 kinds of mystic power. Some so-called yogis and swamis take advantage of this mystic power to cheat people even today. Simply by yawning, the demon Bala created three kinds of women known as 
Svarini, Kamini, and Pumsili. The Svarinis like to marry men from their own group. The Kaminis marry men from any group. And the Pumsilis change husbands one after another. <laughs> if a man enters the planet of Attila, these women immediately capture him, induce him to drink an intoxicating beverage made with a drug known as Haktika, cannabis indica. This intoxicant endows the man with great sexual prowess of which the women take advantage for enjoyment. A woman will enchant him with attractive glances, intimate words, smiles of love, and then embraces. In this way, she induces him to enjoy sex with her to her full satisfaction. Because of his increased sexual power, the man thinks him stronger than 10,000 elephants and considers himself most perfect. Indeed, illusioned, intoxicated by false pride, he thinks himself God, ignoring impending death. Wow. <laughs> Woo. Materialists hear that, they're like, yeah, let me go there. Wow. <laughs> Come on, when's the next train? I'm, I'm on it. <laughs> but this is what we're, uh, before reading, I didn't even know this was in this verse, but this is before starting reading. This is what um, I, was sh I was sharing that I was seeing something like this in um, someone else. It was becoming very blatantly obvious about the desire to enjoy unlimitedly and to be like God, who is the supreme enjoyer. So this is uh, what's going on in Atala. He thinks himself God, ignoring impending death. Yeah, he'll do anything. It doesn't matter. Oh, I'm going to die? Oh, eat, drink, and be merry. Tomorrow I die. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, this is the nature of the desire for sense gratification, which comes from identifying with this body and senses. Ultimately, it's the desire to be like Krishna, the supreme enjoyer. But Krishna is not a material personality. He's a supreme enjoyer, and he's dancing with the gopis, and they're embracing, and they're kissing, and they're spending the night together. But they're not, they don't have material bodies. They're spiritual beings, eternal. This is an eternal ras of devotional service to the Supreme Lord, the creator of the universe. It's like a whole different, um, whole different world the spiritual world. In this world, this material world, especially this Atala Loka, is a perverted reflection through matter. And when the small part and parcel of Krishna tries to be like Krishna, they simply have to continually experience birth and death, old age and disease over and over again. We're trying to Im trying to imitate through the material energy. So it's an imitation. So where this person goes, these these people, these men and women go after in engaging each other like this. we can understand they'll have to glide lower. How can they go higher? They have to go lower. And so there are planets that are much lower than this. So there's no commentary there, but that's Atala, which is of the lower planets, it's one of the higher ones. Now we're gonna go down through the, the muck. <laughs> Text 17, ah, the next planet Below Atala is Vitala, wherein Lord Shiva, who is known as the master of gold mines, lives with his personal associates, the ghosts, and similar living entities. 
Lord Shiva, as the progenitor, engages in sex with Bhavani, the progenitress, to produce living entities. And from the mixture of their vital fluid, the river named Hataki is generated. When fire, being made to blaze by the wind, drinks of this river and then sizzles and spits it out, it produces gold called Hataka. Demons who live on that planet with their wives decorate themselves with various ornaments made from that gold, and thus they live very happily. So Lord Shiva is hes in a category all by himself. He's, he's Krishna. When Krishna comes in contact with the material energy, then that ex Krishna himself never comes in contact with the material energy, but he expands in a very unique way. There's no one else in this category of expansion other than Lord Shiva. And when he expands as Lord Shiva, then he comes into contact with the material energy. And his eternal companion manifests as Bhavani, progenitress, and they engage in sexual procreation, their progenitors and they produce living entities and gold. Mm -hmm. So this is what's going on in Vitala, Prabhupada's commentary. It appears that when Bhava and Bhavani, Lord Shiva and his wife, unite sexually, the emulsification of their secretion, secretions creates a chemical which when heated by fire can produce gold. It's said that alchemists of the medieval age tried to prepare gold from base metal, and Srila Sanatana Goswami also states that when bell metal is treated with mercury, it can produce gold. Srila Sanatana Goswami mentions this in regard to the initiation of low-class men to turn them into Brahmins. Sanatana Goswami says, as one can transform kamsa, or bell metal, into gold by treating it with mercury, one can also turn a low-born man into a Brahmin by initiating him properly into Vaishnava activities. Yeah, so. The, the devotee, the pure devotee, is like the swan. He can take, find the drop of nectar. There's a whole ocean and there's one little drop of milk floating on it. He can take that little drop. So that's the swan-like nature of the pure devotee. So, we're talking about uh, here when Lord Shiva and his wife unite, then the secretions from their bodies, when heated by fire, produce gold. And then Prabhupada turns it around and said, yes, the international Society for Krishna Consciousness is trying to turn this bell metal into gold Be with the, um, you can understand that the pure devotee and his relationship with Krishna is um, from that is produced this um, transformation of the of the base metal or the uh, mleches and the yavanas and turns them into brahmins. It's because of the pure devotee and his relationship with Krishna, his service to Krishna, that these iron-like Kali Yuga-ites, like myself, have a chance of becoming like gold. So Prabhupada makes that comparison. As one can transform bell metal into gold by treating it with mercury, one can also turn a low-born man into a Brahmin by initiating him properly in Vaishnava activities. The International Society for Krishna Consciousness is trying to turn Malachas and Yavanas into real Brahmins by properly initiating them 
and stopping them from engaging in meat-eating, intoxication, illicit sex, and gambling. One who stops these four principles of sinful activity and chants the Hare Krishna Ma Mantra can certainly become a pure Brahmin through the process of bona fide initiation, as suggested by Srila Sanatan Goswami. Apart from this, if one takes a hint from this verse and learns how to mix mercury with bell mel by properly heating and melting them, one can get gold very cheaply. The alchemists of the medieval age tried to manufacture gold, but they were unsuccessful, perhaps because they did not follow the right instructions. <laughs> so, there you go. You want some gold? Go get some mercury and some bell metal and heat them up and melt them, and you'll get gold. Text 18. Okay, so this is another planet. That's this below the planet Vitala is another planet named Sutala, where the great son of Maharaj Varochana, Bali Maharaj, who was celebrated as the most pious king, resides even now. For the welfare of Indra, the king of heaven, Lord Vishnu appeared in the form of a dwarf brahmachari as the son of Aditi and tricked Bali Maharaj by begging for only three paces of land, but ended up taking all the three worlds. Being very pleased with Bali Maharaj for giving all his possessions, the Lord returned his kingdom and made him richer than the opulent King Indra. Even now, Bali Maharaj engages in devotional service by worshiping the Supreme Personality of Godhead in the planet of Sutala. Prabhupada's Commentary. The Supreme Personality of, of Godhead is described as Uttama Sloka, he who is worshipped by the best of selected Sanskrit verses. And his devotees, such as Bali Maharaj, are also worshipped by Punya Sloka, verses that increase one's papayati. Bali Maharaj offered everything to the Lord, his wealth, his kingdom, even his own body, Sarvatmana Vedanam Bali. The Lord appeared before Bali Maharaj as a Brahmin beggar, and Bali Maharaj gave him everything he had. However, Bali Maharaj did not become poor. By donating all his possessions to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he became a successful devotee and got everything back again with the blessings of the Lord. Similarly, those who give contributions to expand the activities of the Krishna consciousness movement and to accomplish its objectives will never be losers. They will get their wealth back with the blessings of Lord Krishna. On the other side, those who collect contributions on behalf of the International Society of Krishna Consciousness should be very careful not to use even a farthing of the collection for any purpose other than the transcendental loving service of the Lord. Mm. So there we have it. Those who give contributions to expand the activities of the Krishna consciousness movement will never be losers. But then, those that are accepting those contributions for expanding the Krishna consciousness movement should not misuse them. So, the example is Bali Maharaj. He gave everything he had. And he was quite wealthy as Maharaj, king, to the Supreme Personality of Godhead and became a, a devotee, a wonderful devotee. And in return, the Lord gave everything back, even more, so that his kingdom was even greater than Indra's, even more opulent than Indra's. So there's that. But that's not why a devotee will give everything to Krishna. A devotee will give everything to Krishna because everything belongs to Krishna. Everything's meant for Krishna's service. <laughs> the devotee doesn't want to keep anything for themselves. Now, a devotee has their quota, 
for what their service might be. They will need facilities for their service. And to maintain the body, there are a certain amount of requirements. And those requirements vary according to the individual, just as each individual's activities while they're in these bodies varies. Someone may be a manager or an officer or a president of this or that, the other thing. And someone else may be just a menial servant, a janitor or a secretary or something like that, whatever. So the requirements will be a little different according to their station in life, according to their varna, their ashram. That's a Shopanishad, you know, if one takes their quota and not more, they can live quite peacefully that way. Should not take more than what's allotted. But if someone is acting directly as a representative of the Lord for spreading the Krishna consciousness movement and is accepting donations, then those should not be used for anything other than the transcendental loving service of the Lord, which also means maintaining the devotees. Otherwise, how could they devote full time to spreading the Krishna consciousness movement? They would have to do something else and in their spare time try to... So yes, there are full-time surrendered servants and devotees and disciples, and they will be maintained. That's part of spreading the Krishna consciousness movement. But they have to be very, very careful not to misuse, Prabhupada says, even a farthing for anything other. So they have to be very careful of that. Hmm. Text 19. My dear king, Bali Maharaj donated all his possessions to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vamanadeva, but one should certainly not conclude that he achieved his great worldly opulence in Bilvaswarga as a result of his charitable disposition. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is the source of life for all living entities, lives within everyone as the friendly super soul, and under his direction a living entity enjoys or suffers in the material world. Greatly appreciating the transcendental qualities of the Lord, Bali Maharaj offered everything at his lotus feet. His purpose, however, was not to gain anything material, but to become a pure devotee. For a pure devotee, the door of liberation is automatically open. One should not think that Bali Maharaj was given so much material opulence merely because of his charity. When one becomes a pure devotee in love, may also be blessed with a good material position by the will of the Supreme Lord. However, one should not mistakenly think that the material opulence of a devotee is the result of his devotional service. The real result of devotional service is the awakening of pure love for the Supreme Personality of Godhead, which continues under all circumstances. And I don't want to miss the point. It's not a business deal, you know. I'm, well, I gave so much in charity, now I'm expecting, you know, the big payoff. Uh, no. <laughs> and Bali Maharaj is the example of that. He was so attracted to the qualities of Vamanadev, the Supreme Personality of Godhead in his incarnation as Vamanadev, that he gave everything just to please the Lord. which means he gave up all his material attachment. He gave the things, yes, but he gave up all his material attachment. And all his attachment and desire were shifted from him being the enjoyer and the controller to the Supreme Lord being the enjoyer and the controller and the proprietor. And he did that in love. He was very happy to do that. in order to establish his eternal relationship with the Lord. Because all those things, material things, they're only temporary. He would have to give them up anyway at the end of the body. So he gave up all his material attachment and became attached to Krishna 
And Krishna was so pleased by this love that Bali Maharaj was so attached to him now that it was safe for Bali Maharaj to have all the stuff back because <laughs> he wasn't attached to it. He was just performing his duties as a matter of duty, but his attachment remains for the Lord with or without the opulence. So that was the success of Bali Maharaj, that he awakened his pure love for the Supreme Personality of Godhead, which as Prabhupada says here, which continues under all circumstances. And that's Bhagavad Gita, one who remains steady in happiness, distress, loss or gain, victory or defeat. And the super soul is reached. So remain steady.